Yeah, but I'm so, yeah, I know, but I have working on this one. You'll get it soon? You'll get the notification soon? You don't know. Oh. But you're about to go by. Are you already by? You're already by. Good morning. Good morning. The Lord of the universe, who revealed the star of Bethlehem to the Gentiles of the East, so they could come and worship Jesus, the Prince of Peace and King of Kings, gives each one of us the same light of revelation to recognize and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Faith is an entirely free gift that God gives to us. It is through the help of the Holy Spirit who moves the heart and opens the eyes of the mind that we are able to understand, accept, and believe the truth which God has revealed to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. In faith, the human will and intellect cooperate with grace. To know and to encounter Jesus Christ is to know God personally. In the encounter of the wise men with Jesus, we see the plan of God to give us his only son as king and savior. Not just for the Jewish people, but for all the nations as well. The Lord Jesus came that both Jew and Gentile might find true and everlasting peace with God. Please stand and welcome our son. Please join in singing our gathering song, Jesus, Light of the World, hymn number 274, in the green leaf.
God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, on this great feast of the Epiphany in this Christmas season, we gather once again with Jesus, the light of the world, calling all people and uh, offering the end of all divisions and all fences and all other expressions of isolation and alienation. But we, we participate in that and we're sinful and broken. And so every Mass we begin asking for God's mercy.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
it was not made known to people of generations as it had now been revealed to its holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles are co heirs, co heirs, members of the same body, and co partners in the promise. Thank you. 
dear friends of Christ. On this feast, the feast of the Epiphany, when we talk about the revelation of God, there's two things that we need to, to, to uh, consider. And first of all, the thing that, that strikes me about the, the, the whole Christmas season that's totally neglected in our society is that when Jesus took flesh, when Jesus pitched his tent among us, automatically bringing healing, bringing love, bringing truth, bringing wisdom into the world had consequences, and the consequences were the crucifixion. When love meets evil, when generosity meets selfishness, when truth meets ignorance, there's a conflict, and it's usually fatal. This is what, what Christmas is, is about. It's not to be sad, it's not to be uh, worrisome, it's just the human reality. This is what we live with. This is the world that we have. So uh, in today's uh, uh, series of events, we see the immediately Herod is worried. And the Jewish leaders are asked the question, but they don't respond to, where is that child? We're looking for the Messiah. They were protecting their self-interest. They wanted to continue their power, their privilege, their prosperity to the neglect of other people. And so when, when the, the Magi asked the question, where will this Messiah be born? Where will this new king come from? And they say, Bethlehem. And so the Magi were seekers of God. They were seekers of truth. They wanted a world that would express the basic beauty of human dignity, of inclusion and acceptance, of unity. And they ran into a world like Chicago. <laughs> Broken, divided, segregated, isolated, and that world is maintained because somebody's making an advantage of it. Just like Herod and the leaders of the Jews were there. So this is, this is the fundamental human reality, is that this, we live in the context of this war between good and evil. It takes all kinds of expressions at the highest level, and at the deepest level of our own heart. We live with love and hatred. We live with prejudice and acceptance. We live with brokenness and wholeness. That's, that's our world. That's what we what the stuff of, of our daily experience. Now, when we see this conflict in the story in today's gospel, immediately, immediately when the conflict surfaces, the Holy Family becomes political refugees. They have to get, they have to travel without papers. They have to go to a foreign country and meet a new culture and survive hand to mouth. 
And that was a blessing, because if they didn't, they were going to be part of the Holy Innocents, where all these children were slaughtered to maintain power and wealth and privilege. Ain't changed much, folks. <laughs> it's the same story that's been going on since Adam and Eve ate the apple. And, and so when we come to today's feast, immediately we can say, this is why we have to have Black Lives Matter. And this is why we live in a city with 800 homicides. And all that's in between, and all that's around that, that every day we live on the edge of, of this destructive violence, just sitting in your room, in your home, and the bullet comes in. And this is the world that is Chicago. So, so when, when Jesus took flesh, he came to Chicago. He came among us. He came among all people. And so, uh, the basic theme of Christmas is love and hatred, ignorance and truth, justice and injustice, inclusion and exclusion. This is in the highest elements of our society, which, which was epitomized by Trump's wall to separate and isolate. And trying to get our Lady Africa to become one parish out of five. Bring it home. Bring it home. And we all participate in this drivenness isolation and otherness and they hate us and it just Christmas is Jesus is saying we are all one and so the epiphany then is the revelation is the revelation of, of a God who has taken flesh and become one of us and so, this message that we are one, that we are one people, is expressed in the three kings, even more so in the shepherds, who were the most marginalized and the most isolated in their society. So the rich and the poor have came to Jesus, have, have come to Jesus to express this hunger that we could be one. This, this burning desire to say it can be different. And so on this feast, when we one of the interesting things that that's really sort of opens up what we're living with. The scripture doesn't say anything about three kings. And this is nothing about their racial diversity. Somehow the church developed this tradition over a thousand years where we had the three kings, but they were very different. Kings indeed. And that was a beautiful expression of the need to include. That was a marvelous expression of the need to say everybody, everybody is welcome at the table in the kingdom. And this is what Epiphany is about, that everybody is welcome at the table in the kingdom. When I come into this church, and I look around, I see this, I see Our Lady of Africa, I see the expressions in the, in the vestibule, 
so many expressions of our God as black, as African American. Now, is that good or bad? In my mind, it is totally beautiful. In the shrine, national shrine of our Catholic faith in Washington, D.C., they have one of the biggest, I don't know what, it's not a picture, it's a, it's a, a, a I forget the word, but it's a huge thing, 34 feet in, in the dome of the National Shrine. And they have this Jesus, the Christ of Majesty. And the Christ of Majesty in our National Shrine has beautiful blonde hair and blue eyes and nice pink skin. And that was built as saying expressly the Catholic Church in the United States in the 1950s. It was a white Jesus. And so in 1968, when Father Fernando, a Mexican Jesuit who was working at Holy Family on Roosevelt Road, came out with the first black Christ on the cross. Oh my God, you should have heard it. You, you should have heard it. How can they do that? How can that happen? And I, I said, isn't Jesus black? <laughs> you think he's white? For hundreds of years, all we had was the blonde, blue-eyed Jesus. And Jesus isn't blonde and blue-eyed, and Jesus isn't black. Jesus is Jewish. But Jesus wanted to be part of everybody's life. And so, especially after hundreds of years of, of degradation of the image of God, as being white, and we come up with black, that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. That, and we need an Asian expression. We need a, a Caribbean expression. We need a Malaysian expression. We need to express God in our cultures in every different way. The problem is the first part of what I talked about that we all want to make Jesus mine. He, he mine. And I'm not sure. This is my parish. I'm not leaving. This is my program. I've been the, the main man in this program forever, and there ain't nobody taking my job. Who does that happen? Because it's in the human heart, and this is what Jesus came to uproot. And the epiphany is today to tell us that we are all invited to the table. We are all the people of God. We need our culture to express that so we understand it better. There is nothing wrong with that. But in the end, every culture suffers from the weeds and the wheat, from love and hatred, from prejudice and inclusion. And the gospel is always calling us back to tear down the fences, to get rid of the isolation, to get rid of the separation, and to accept ourselves. We are the people of God. And believe me, that struggle goes on at the highest level and at the deepest level. And it's never going to be finished until we walk into the pearly gates. But in the meanwhile, we celebrate the epiphany to hear Jesus tell us, keep it up. Join in the struggle. Try to be one. Try to be a people that witnesses to the truth. And isn't there to kill the babies, to isolate, to protect, 
and to, to uh, keep quiet, but to say, let us, let us be the people of God. Let us hear the gospel where Jesus takes the Samaritan woman who was most hateful to the Jews and blesses her. Where Jesus takes the woman caught in adultery and says, no sin anymore, sweetheart, you're my child. Oh, when Jesus took, looks at the exact of Zacchaeus up in the trees and come down, man, I'm going to your house. And it's all, all, all through the gospel. Inclusion, not exclusion. And that's our call. That's our call to be one. Oh, sweet Jesus, it is so hard. It is so hard, but that's what we stay in the struggle for. To be one in the footsteps of Jesus. And that's why I was told, and I didn't do this during Advent, but I was told some people were upset. <laughs> but I don't want to upset you, but I want to tell you what I'm about. And I'm about is that we all walk with Jesus. That we all accept the gospel. We know that we can be better. We know that we need to change. And that's only going to happen when we walk with Jesus. So, are you ready? Yes. You remember? Yes. Ah, my brothers and sisters, do you want to walk with Jesus? Yes, yes Lord. Some of you have been away too long for so Yes. Uh, you can do the body thing, but it's really the heart that counts. The body helps the heart, though. So I want to ask you one last time. As we join in this Eucharist and unite ourselves with Christ crucified and Christ risen, we unite ourselves with the God who reveals and invites, and we encounter that Jesus in the Word, in the sacrifice, in the community of brothers and sisters. Do you want to walk with Jesus? Yes! God bless you.
for members of the administration and Congress, that God will give them a clear understanding of the issues before them and wisdom to effectively address them for the good, for the common good of all people. For creation, raise your voice and on the new year, that God will fill the coming day with health of body, mind, and spirit. Renew the gifts of the Spirit within us and inspire us with new ways to share the good news with others. Thank you. 
Creator. Let us pray. Look with favor, Lord, on these gifts of your church in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We live on to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations, and when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his, his immortal nature. And so with the angels and archangels, the thrones and dominions, and with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Life 
and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Thank you.
Alex Smith's Church Chapel. The Bahamian Mass will start at 1.30 p.m. after our service here. The French Mass today will be at 6 p.m. The office will be open all week from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. All of the other announcements are in the bulletin. Thank you. Before we, we close, I'd like to introduce uh, a visitor that I have today, Father Raimundo Luis. Would you please stand? Raimundo is a Catholic from Mozambique, and he's doing graduate studies in world theology at Catholic University. So he came to take a break with us in our community. So, thank you. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may uh, perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mysteries in which you have willed us to participate. So we ask this. Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass has ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Join us in our closing hymn, Sing of Mary, Pure and Lowly, found on hymn number 271 in your green Lead Me Guide Me hymn. 